Hi, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today I am filming my Q&A video. I normally only do one of these a year, but I figured with me leaving and coming back that you might have a lot of questions, and you did. So I wanted to film one more so I could answer those for you. I have not said this since I have returned, and I have a lot of uh, new viewers, I do believe, and um, so my name is Melinda. If you're new, thank you so much for joining me. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. So I'm going to get right into this. There is a lot of questions. I normally cut it off before it's going to get this long and I just totally forgot. So I want to answer everybody's questions. Um, I'm only going to read your name if it comes to me really, really easy. And please don't be offended by that. You know how usernames are. So let's jump right in. The first question is the top three bags in rotation for you at the moment. I did read these questions ahead of time, as you can tell, and so I have some eye candy for you. I have been loving my Saint Laurent Nikki bag in the size medium in the color caramel, my Hermes Evelyn in the gold. You can see the difference in the colors. The gold is more rich. They're both fabulous fall colors, and my Loop Hobo. Loving this bag. It is fabulous for fall. It's finally chilly enough. I have a scarf on. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love fall. Um, do you wear a different bag each day? Yes, uh, pretty much. Sometimes I might be too lazy to switch out, but almost every day I switch. And not the small leather goods, though. <laughs> I tend to keep those and just move them. Uh, Louis Vuitton CT, do you know how often Marc Jacobs releases new colors of the tote bag? I think twice a year, like pre-spring, pre-fall. I could be wrong, but I think so. Uh, Lola Ray 22, how are you? How's the family? Thank you for asking. That's very kind. We're all very good. I just got back from seeing my dad for the weekend. He's really good. And um, we're all doing great. Thank you. And I hope you and your family are doing wonderful as well. Martha Barr 04, are you going to sell any of your items? <sighs> I should, I need to, I really do, I need to. I have said as long as I've been on this channel, things that you're not using are sitting on your shelf, it's money sitting on your shelf, it's money sitting there if you're not using it. And I don't know, I have this freeze. <laughs> with wanting to sell anything. I'm not sure if you saw my video on why I stopped selling my bags. I will link that down below, but I really should have a vlog sale. I really should. I, I should. <laughs> um, my dear friend Andrea, favorite place you and hubby visited thus far? Um, for me, it's London and Paris. Not for him. <laughs> he wasn't crazy about Paris. He liked London a lot. We're going back next year. I'm going to convert him to liking Paris. Um, I did ask him this question and he said Aruba. I love Aruba as well. What is your favorite dessert? I love ice cream. I love ice cream. I hardly ever eat sugar. It's very, very rare. And I hardly ever eat ice cream. That's pretty rare too, but I love ice cream. I can't tell you the last time I baked cookies, but my favorite dessert are my own homemade um, cookies right out of the oven and they're warm and gooey and I'm good at baking. I'm very good at baking. <laughs> um, do you ever feel overwhelmed with so many choices in your collection? Currently me. Sometimes, yes. Um, I get what you're saying. I have a lot of bags. I get what you're saying. It helps for me if I stay extremely, extremely organized. Like, you know, you'll you'll grab a bag on Monday, a different bag on Tuesday, maybe you get another one on Thursday and you don't put everything back all correctly or, you know, like, you know, you get your closet all perfect and then you let it go for a few days and you get it all perfect again. When everything is clean, I don't feel overwhelmed. Um, but when things are in disorder, it, it gets to me. Uh, Nathalia, do you always feel comfortable using your designer pieces or save for special occasion? Um, I do not save anything for a special occasion. Life itself is a special occasion. So I wear my things all the time. Uh, wear your beautiful things. Every day is a special occasion. Get to be here, get to be alive. <laughs> um, Favorite small leather goods you would always repurchase again? Um, okay, this isn't gonna surprise you at all. Zoe, 
Zoe wallet. <laughs> this is the one I'm currently using. I actually bought another one of these for my birthday in the monogram um, canvas and it came all kinds of defective and I didn't like it anyways but like right here could literally cut your finger whatever they did there but the inside leather was really stiff it was really stiff um, I wish they made more on prompt colors I would buy more of these uh, my Hermes Bastias I love these these are always with me this one I just use for little bits that are in the bag this one always has um, earphones for the phone and this one always has my clippa um, bag organizer in that and um, yeah I'll use these all the time the mini pochettes I have two I love these I switch out about once a year I'm currently into the mom monogram one and I'm so happy I got this one I did because they're so expensive they're so expensive the inside's so beautiful and for cosmetic pouches I really am not using my Toilet 226 or my um, GM uh, Monogram Eclipse from the men's line anymore. I found things that are better for travel, but I love this Gucci Affidia case. This is fabulous. I always have this one and that Coach Cherries one filled with some amount of things. And my oldest small leather goods and most use are my clays. I have just the plain monogram one and then I have the Damier Aben one. I have a car that is not keyless anything and this particular one is my oldest and it has always had a key dangling on it and it has never, the gold has never turned, nothing. It stayed really, really nice. Uh, Joan Chow, what do you think about Y2K being back in again? Do you have favorite bags for this trend? So I'm glad I read these because my youngest daughter was actually sitting next to me and I asked her this. I'm like, what is Y2K fashion? She's like, I don't know. So we started looking it up and it's the low rise jeans, the crop shirts and no goodness. No, 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 no. <laughs> I like remember Y2K, but not the fashion. Not for, not for my body type. Absolutely not. And I don't, I don't want to go back to that era. I saw every friend that I had their full hiney. I don't know if they can't feel the air what was going on someone would bend over full-on hiney or crack and I don't want to see any more bottoms I, I do not like the fashion trend um, the bags um, I love bags I love all the bags <laughs> um, the ones that I think were really neat from back then is I see a lot of the white multicolor Louis Vuitton ones I love those um, what would you recommend is a good work bag for rainy days and on New York City commutes thanks um, I have always lived in the suburbs and so I asked my girlfriend who is a native New York City girl and she works in Manhattan she takes the subway every day um, she's been commuting her whole life so I'm like what is your take on this and she said a really good zipped tote I would recommend the Longchamp large play pliage um, it is fabulous in rain any kind of weather and it's large enough that you can fit whatever you would like to bring with you you know your lunch an extra pair of shoes scarf whatever water bottle or what she wears personally she wears a crossbody bag um, like a messenger style with a zip and like a little flap over it but um, she did say she would not recommend wearing um, designer bags while commuting so from a New Yorker <laughs> Uh, this bag lady, what TV shows are you into lately? We have been watching a lot of old sitcoms. The world is so dark right now and a lot of the shows that we like are kind of heavy. So we have just been watching light comedies and having fun laughing and a lot of these shows we haven't seen in many years. We've finished Parks and Recreation, Two and a Half Men, Big Bang Theory, Everybody Loves Raymond, we're watching that some, uh, King of Queens, Seinfeld, and Friends, <laughs> and like for regular shows that are currently out, um, we like um, Jack Ryan, a little bit heavy though, right? Outlander, um, we like, um, I'm trying to think, what is it? 
oh, Person of Interest. My dad turned us on to that. It's a little bit of an older show, um, but we had never seen it before. We really like that one too. That's really good. And I just finished and Just Like That and um, part season two. And I cannot wait for Emily in Paris to come back and for Wednesday to come back. I watched some of the housewives, but those women can't scream. And how do you have friends? Seriously, like y'all seriously. If you watch this show, have you ever spoken to your friends like that in your entire life? <laughs> like, and then they talk to you the next day? <laughs> I don't know. But if I want my husband to leave the room, I put on the Real Housewives of Anywhere. Boom, he's out. Uh, can you please review your tennis bracelet? I'm not really sure what I would say differently about it than what I said in the uh, video where I revealed it. I will link that video down below. Um, I would 100% repurchase it. I highly recommend getting a tennis bracelet. I love it. It's comfortable. Uh, it does not pinch or anything like that. I really, really enjoy it. Um, but since this one was custom made, it wasn't custom made for me, but it was custom made. It's kind of hard to do a review because there's no real comparison because he completely made the mold himself. He did everything and he has never had another one since. I've been in there many, many times. He's not designed another one. So I'm really glad that I picked that one up. Uh, Lana May 25, in spite of their lower resale value, would you still buy Fendi and Dior handbags? Thanks. Yes, 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 yes. I've been buying Fendi since 2018 fully knowing that the second I walk out of that boutique that that bag is worth half of what I just paid for it. I have been seeing the Fendi, um, the peekaboos going up a little bit in the resale market. Um, I bought a Fendi bag this January and I just recently bought a Lady Dior bag in August. So I don't think about resale value because like right now, um, there's been a lot of videos. I haven't watched any of them. I probably need to before I do a vlog sale, but it, um, Apparently it's quite hard to sell. The resale market is not doing very well, but you just can't, you can't ever bet on that you're gonna get anything back. Handbags are not an investment. Um, what are your thoughts on the Bulgari Serpentine Bracelet? I hope I'm saying that. Serpen, serpentine? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, tell me how to say that down below. We'll just say serpent, because I can say that. <laughs> but um, I think it's super cool. I think it is something you don't see coming and going all the time. I honestly don't know if I was doing it over again, if I would repurchase Cartier Love Pieces. Uh, I would definitely do the Just on Clue, but I think this one stands out and it's unique and it's different. And I do think it's really cool. Uh, Katie W, favorite holiday, any tradition? This is funny because I was just on the phone with Miss Minimalist and that's, this isn't what we were talking about. I didn't tell her any of the questions. I was seeing if she could come for Thanksgiving. And then we started talking about, I went to my dad's for Thanksgiving last year and we do not do a traditional Thanksgiving. We stopped doing that 10 plus years ago and I had traditional Thanksgiving last year. And we were talking about the traditional food if you have never experienced an American Thanksgiving, most people have a turkey. Um, I, I don't know why once a year everybody makes a turkey. I hate turkey. My kids hate turkey. My husband's eh with turkey. And she was so funny. She's like, what is the deal with cranberry sauce? Like, what is the deal with it? I actually made it from scratch once. It was good. It was good. But usually people undo a can and slice it. And then we were both like, what is the deal with stuffing? We hate stuffing. Stuffing is bread, old dried up bread that you put chicken broth and celery and it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry if you love Thanksgiving food, we do not. Um, so on Thanksgiving, what we do, everybody gets to pick their own protein. She always picks chicken. Um, my other daughter and my husband always pick steak. I pick fish and then I make any side dishes that they want. So mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, hot rolls, green bean casserole. It sounds really low calorie and healthy, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like so good for you. And then dessert. Of course it's not good for you, but we have so much fun. Then we put the tree up. My mom did not approve and whenever my mom came, I would make her turkey and stuffing and anything that she wanted, whatever would make her happy, but, but we enjoy that. And let's see, Erica Brooke, do you think contemporary brands will eventually be luxury prices? I haven't watched your video yet. I learned something on that video, if you haven't watched it yet, is somebody wrote me in the comments down below that uh, recently on Coach's website, there was a bag that was a thousand plus. I don't remember the exact amount of the bag and that it had sold out. 
To me, that is luxury pricing. Tory Burch has some that are really up there too. And to me, when you're getting into $1,000, that's luxury made in China. And for me, that's a hard, hard no. I'm already not gonna buy contemporary brands going forward. But yeah, I think they're gonna get very comfortable and keep bumping up those prices. Uh, Magnificat, oh, I like that name. Are you looking forward to having grandkids? Yes, no. Yes, no, <laughs> I don't know. I know I will be. Uh, nobody is pregnant. Um, when I get a call and um, one of my daughters says I'm pregnant, I'm gonna be ecstatic, ecstatic. But it's kind of, you know, it's an unknown. I've never been a grandma before. My, It's gonna be very bittersweet. My mom desperately wanted great grandchildren. My mother loved children like nobody on this planet. She did so much for children. Love them, love them, love them. And she was like, when your daughter has a baby, do you think she'll let me keep her babies? And I'm like, heck yeah, she will. She'll probably pay you to keep them. <laughs> sure she will. So it's gonna be a little bittersweet. Um, Palm Chi Buster, do you think LV should go back to their roots of making bags? I'm assuming that you mean back to canvas pieces more than leather. Um, and yes, I think that'd be fabulous. I wish they did more canvas pieces. I love this, I love this this loop bag. It's, it's so cool, it's unique, it's different. And I would love to see more canvas displays in their stores. It's always the same things. It's the twists, it's the capucines, it's the, um, you know, it's just all the, you know, I have more leather bags. It's all leather. <laughs> I have more leather bags than canvas bags from Louis Vuitton. Their leather is fabulous, but I would love to see more canvas. Hopefully that was answering your question. Helen Mallinson, what are your thoughts on vintage bags? I think they're fabulous. And I think you can probably get some really good deals right now and probably better quality than a lot of things you're seeing in boutiques, like like the, the wallet that could cut your hand. <laughs> I think they're great. Okay, are you planning to buy more Tiffany & Co. gold jewelry? I don't know. And I actually looked this up the earrings that I have been wanting, the hardware earrings, they did go up in price. They are now $4,100. And let me just tell you very quickly because I can't add that fast. They're $4,499.75 for me. So $4,500 for a pair of earrings. They're beautiful. Are they worth $4,500 worth to me? I'm really thinking no. Um, I'm, I am really getting turned off by a lot of luxury things right now. And I always have a fabulous experience in Tiffany, always. I think their things are beautiful, but that's a lot of money for a pair of earrings. And do you even know if I have earrings on today? <laughs> I do, I have hoops, you would never know. So I don't know. Never say never, but probably not. Dale from the channel Dale's Addiction. Check her out if you have not. Uh, what advice would you give your early handbag buying self now that you have so much experience? This is a fabulous question, fabulous, fabulous. Number one, knock it off with the black bags. Knock it, knock it, knock it off. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't know what my deal was. I was the self-proclaimed queen of black handbags. Why, how boring can you possibly get? Boring, boring, boring. I know my newest bag is black, but it's the Weve and it's the puzzle. <laughs> I needed it, <laughs> but I would get color. Um, I wish I knew my style back then. I was, I was really, really learning my style and actually my style evolved. So it wouldn't matter if I knew it because I love crossbody bags. I, you couldn't have paid me to wear a crossbody bag when I first started. Um, buying luxury bags. So, but color, I wish I had gone for color. I had two beautiful, I did go for color, but I sold them quickly. I had two beautiful Dior, um, Miss Dior promenade pochettes, one in a fuchsia hot pink and one in a cobalt blue. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I sold those for less than half, more than half, less, I <laughs> got less than half back of what I paid for them. I will find my words. They were lambskin, I got terrified of it. I wish I wasn't so scared of leathers and colors to your lambskin 
is amazing. I wish I had kept those. I will put pictures of those in. The main thing that I wish I had done, and you're not gonna like this, but I wish I had gone for Hermes way sooner. Um, very much like Dale, she's made several videos on how she's not into Hermes. I did too. I was like, I'm never gonna buy them. I'm not playing the games, I'm not doing it. I've never had to play a game. It's always pleasant. I really enjoy my sales associate. She's 100% just tells me. She's like, there's a, you know, there's a shot you're going to get a bag and there's zero shot and I don't, and she doesn't make me jump through hoops. She just tells me there is nothing I can offer you or whatever it may be. And it's, it's been lovely. Okay. So some of these are a little bit out of order at this point. Um, because the almost all the rest of them coming up are about YouTube, but there's here's one that's different. Are you a tea or coffee person and which country would you like to explore outside of the American continent? Um, I am a tea person and I am a very specific tea person. I like unsweet iced tea and um, my daughter is always like, Miss Minimalist like, that's so gross. <laughs> I'm like, it is not. I can't drink hot things. I mean, I'm sure you've seen me turn all kinds of red on this channel. I get hot super easy, so I like unsweet. But you can't buy junky tea. It can't be like Lipton or Louisiana. You have to get really good English breakfast tea. And I don't drink it that often, and I'm probably the only person in the world who could care less if Starbucks existed or not. I just, I don't care. Um, where would I like to go? Um, Europe, uh, which we're going back to, and you're probably gonna be like, well, okay, you've already been to London and Paris, so why aren't you going to these other places? It's a simple matter of time with my husband's job, and we do have a nonstop flight from Nashville to uh, London, so, um, but I want to go to Italy, I want to see Rome, I wanna see Tuscany, I wanna go to Florence, all sorts of places, Venice, I want to go to, um, Spain. Uh, my sister just got back. I can't I've already said that. She just did Spain and Italy. Well, she, two totally different trips. She said she's Europe'd out for a long time, but she had a good time. My daughter's been to Spain. There's several places I'd like to see in Spain. I'd love to go to Holland. We'd love to um, just Europe, 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 Europe. Okay, so now the YouTube questions. Um, I'm so glad you're back. What made you change your mind? I love your videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. How has the return to YouTube been for you? I hope it's been positive. Um, we love you, glad you're back. Thank you so much, Andrea, I appreciate that. Uh, what made you go back to YouTube? Are you glad to be back on YouTube? What do you do for a living? What's your job title? Do you like it? Not a question, just wanted to say I love your videos and I'm glad you're back. See Harris 79 Thank you, I really appreciate that. No question, Monica Owls. No question, just wanted to say I love your videos and I love the way you are so genuine and pleasant. Thank you so much, that is so kind. Uh, no question, uh, D-Bag, no, I can't say it, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, anyways, no question, but your videos are great. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicole Zachary, I love this. Don't let others' perceptions and negativity in this turn you off. Love that you are back. Um, thank you so much. So what I do for a living, you're gonna be so disappointed. This is it, it's YouTube. That's it, it's nothing exciting. I did go into a lot of depth in this in another video. Um, my husband and I have been together a very long time. We're about to celebrate our 32nd wedding anniversary and we raised our children. Everything went to our children and now it's our time and so we just want to spend as much time together as possible traveling together as possible and this just works out for us um, so am I glad to be back on YouTube yes I am uh, if I wasn't I would just disappear <laughs> I would leave um, why did I come back so I left uh, actually in the beginning of January there are days it just depends on how I feel where I will film multiple videos in a day and I did that and I scheduled them to release throughout January but I had actually stopped filming. I did respond to comments and things like that. Um, then in March I made a goodbye video because I had made a previous promise that I would say goodbye. If I had thought on any level whatsoever that I would come back I would have never ever made that video, I would have just taken a break and come back. I genuinely thought this is it, it's done, 
no more. And um, when I made that video, it was eight minutes, super positive, because there was no, there's no need for negativity, it was super positive, and why I was leaving was not a bunch of negative reasons, I was just overwhelmed. But after that video, there's some things I didn't say in that video because it would have been highly irrelevant to the video. But after that video, there was a lot of, um, I guess, reaction videos, if you will. And um, some of them were fabulous and some of them were putting words into my mouth and into other YouTubers' mouths. Um, so just to clarify, <laughs> I did not leave because my channel was failing. I did not leave because of any of that. I left on my best year ever. The year I had the most subscriber growth. The year I had the most growth in viewers, views, view time hours. My highest paid year. I changed my content up quite a bit last year. I did cooking vlogs. I did travel vlogs. I did shopping vlogs. I did a lot of sitting down chit chat videos with you and a lot of different things. And it was met um, it was met very well. It was, it, it was very successful for me uh, as a small, small, small YouTuber. I am not, I'm teeny tiny and I'm fine with that, but it was very successful. So that had nothing to do with it. My favorite one was that I was leaving to become a minimalist. Um, maybe they want to watch the video on what I bought when I was away, but I, I don't think anything was ill intentioned or anything like that, you know, but I wasn't specific. So there's the clarification of that. Why did I come back? Well, a lot of healing happened in that time. Like I said, I was just overwhelmed. A lot of healing happened and I missed you guys. I did. I missed the community here. I love our interactions. I learn so much from you. I hope you learn a few things from me here and there. Uh, I miss that. I miss the creative aspect of it. Um, I probably should have taken a, a big break when my mom passed, but the reason that I didn't, uh, I actually started filming like almost right away, and that was just to keep my brain somewhere, anywhere, away from what was going on. And like I said, we just went to my dad's house for the weekend. This is the very first time I have been there without crying, the first time since she passed. So it's just a lot of healing and I love the creative aspect of this. And um, I had said I was sick of talking about handbags and when I have I've come back and I have done a lot of non handbag videos, um, shopping vlogs with my daughters at Target, uh, cooking videos. I mean, I know they're not as popular as unboxings, but um, I've only done one bag review since I have been back and uh, it's not that one, <laughs> but yeah, so, um, nothing earth shattering or crazy about that and the very last question is from sarah and i think you were my last question on my last um q a i'm sitting here moving my hand where nobody can see it i probably just look like i'm <laughs> jiggling down here uh so far what has this year taught you p.s love your personality so much thank you you are so kind sarah i appreciate that so, so many lessons this year. So, so many. Um, the biggest one is I won't ever ignore my family's advice again. Um, sadly, I'm also not going to be as trusting of people again. Um, my family, my daughters would be like, Mom, everything this person is saying about this situation is a lie. We can prove it's a lie. Uh, none of this is true. My husband is like, Melinda, how can't you see that this is all lies? This could never happen the way this has been explained to you. Um, but you know what? When somebody's willing to lie to somebody else and they felt free to tell me that they were lying to somebody else, they're going to lie to you period. They are. And I wish I had listened to my family. I was really hurt. Um, I was taken advantage of. I was used and I was lied to. But there's healing. And the most, the most important lesson is there's forgiveness. That's, that's the biggest lesson. So yes, I definitely am going to be a lot more guarded going forward with my real personal life. It's not going to be super easy to get into my my uh, inner circle. Um, 
the people that are there are, are amazing, but it's not going to be easy to get in. Um, but the lesson, the biggest lesson is forgiveness. I am somebody, and this is embarrassing to admit, but I'm just going to be honest with you because there's no reason not to be. And because I can't lie, I'm such a bad liar. If I tell my family I just robbed a bank, come on and get on the road with me. <laughs> They're either going to get on the road with me or they're going to turn me in because they're going to believe me. Um, but I have been a grudge holder and that's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It does me no good whatsoever. So even though I was extremely hurt by that situation, I have forgiven that person completely. And I have forgiven a lot of people this year, a lot of people this year. Um, holding a grudge is like drinking poison and hoping that person gets sick. I would never hope somebody would get sick, but you're making yourself sick by holding a grudge. Forgiveness is amazing and it's wonderful. And as a Christian, how can I hold a grudge and then expect forgiveness for myself, right? Like that doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I pray for the people that I have forgiven. Um, there is a woman who absolutely cannot stand me. <laughs> I mean, seriously cannot stand me. I don't care at all. I genuinely don't care at all. But I pray for her and her family every night. Um, and she'll never know it. And she doesn't need to know it. God knows it. I know it. And, and that's the power of prayer. And nobody else needs to know it. So that's been a huge, huge, huge life lesson. And the last thing, I wouldn't call it a, a lesson or something that I learned this year, but just a bitter reminder of how fragile life is. We are not... Um, aging is... is, is a privilege. It is not a right. Um, and we, my husband and I, we lost one of our dearest friends this year. Um, it was my husband's best friend from childhood uh, till the day that he passed. And he was my friend when I met him at 18 until the day that he passed. He was the best man at our wedding. We went on so many trips together, um, always were texting and, and always seeing each other. And he woke up one day, uh, not too long ago, with chest pains, and he told his wife, if I start to feel worse, call 911. She went ahead and called 911, but by the time the paramedics got there, he was gone. He had a heart attack, zero blockage. We're all just left like, why? He was so young, he was 52 years old. Why, why, why? I saw the autopsy report none of it made sense. He was healthy. It just, what happened? He's gone. He is gone. Um, shortly before he passed, I'm going to try not to cry. Um, he had texted my husband and he's the, so we had our children at the same time. They're like three months apart. Um, my oldest and his only, his only child. And he asked my husband, he's like, which one of us is going to be a grandpa first? Well, it's heartbreaking. He is. And he, he's never going to know. They were going to tell him like the next week they had a t-shirt drawn up and um, with a beer mug clinking a baby bottle and saying you're going to be a grandpa. And it was so cute. And um, it's just life is so short. Treasure those people that you love. Keep your family close. My family is everything to me. My daughters are my very, very best friends. We talk every single day. Tell the people in your life that you love them. Cherish your really good friends. Tell them that you love them. I have no problem telling my girlfriends, I love you, talk to you later, bye. I have no problem with that. Tell people you appreciate them and appreciate their friendship. This year, I've, I've had two amazing, amazing friends really come through for me and really help me out and um, it's just been wonderful. Uh, one of them is a YouTuber, Andrea, you know her. Another one is a friend that I connected with last year and um, we were wonderful, wonderful friends. She's she's the mother of the son that's going to have the, the baby, him and his wife. Um, but um, we connected last year and we've got to see each other three times this year. She calls me all the time, but I'm so grateful for good people that are in my life and I don't ever want to lose that. I want I want to keep growing, keep learning. I want positivity and um just I just want, you know, 
I just want good things for everybody. I wish everybody well. I genuinely do. Even if somebody has hurt me or has done me wrong, I wish you all the best. I truly do. When I say, when I end these videos, I hope you have an amazing day, I genuinely mean that. I do. And this has been very long, so we're going to wrap this up. I do hope you have an amazing day today. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope to talk to you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.